So guys, we've all been there. You've just ordered your latest memory modules. You know, they've got that aggressive heat sink. They've got all that RGB goodness. But are they actually any faster than the memory you're getting rid of? Hey guys, and welcome back to Back of Beyond Tech. So, as I said in the intro, memory. Is memory actually getting any faster? Is that new DDR4 you bought any faster than the DDR3 or the DDR4 you might have been running previously? Today we're going to find out, we're going to ask a few questions about memory. Um, I'm going to do this over a bit of gameplay. Um, just because there's lots of charts and calculations to go over. So we're going to switch over to that right now. So guys, I started thinking about this after I read an article on Ars Technica in which they reported that JDEC is announcing that DDR5 will jump off the drawing board in 2018. Then I got thinking about Ryzen and how sensitive it is to memory and a thought started to form in my head. Has memory actually gotten faster? Sure, the clock speeds have improved, but does that mean the end experience is any better? I remember moving from DDR3 to DDR4, and I didn't notice any earth-shattering difference in terms of performance. So I started looking into this, and to truly understand what is going on, we're going to have to spare a few moments discussing memory, so we're all on the same page. First, when I talk about memory in terms of modern systems, I'm talking about SD RAM or synchronous dynamic random access memory that we are all using currently. Secondly, to truly understand how fast or slow a memory kit is, we need to consider two things. Number one, the clock speed the memory is running at. That's the number everyone cares about, i.e. DDR4 3000. That just means that the module is rated to run at a certain, fre certain frequency, for example, 3000 megahertz or three million cycles per second. Number two is the CL, or cast latency, of the module, or how long it takes the memory to respond to a command from the memory controller. The latency can be found on the timings that are generally printed on the module itself. The latency is the first number after the speed of the memory. For example, if you have a DDR4-3000 module with timings of 16-16-16-32, the latency is 16. So guys, are we all following so far? Great. So now we know the speed and the latency of a module. We can work out its true speed. And that is simply the clock speed divided by two as DDR memory is double data rate, meaning it can process two commands per cycle multiplied by the cast latency. So if we want to know how fast our DDR4 3000 module actually was in the real world, we divide 3000 by two to give 1500 megahertz, we would then convert the 1500 megahertz into hertz by multiplying by a thousand to give 1.5 million hertz. Now we need to divide one second by 1.5 million to give us the cycle time or speed of the memory, which in this case would be 0.667 nanoseconds. Now we multiply the cycle time of 0.667 nanoseconds by 16, or the cast latency that's printed on the memory to give a speed of 10.67 nanoseconds. So for the DDR4 3000 module, the fastest it can react to a command from the memory controller is 10.67 nanoseconds. Now remember that number, guys. So let's cast our minds back to when we use that old fashioned DDR3. Let's do the same calculation for a DDR3 2400 module with a cast latency of 12. On the face of it, the DDR4 is newer and has a faster clock, so it should be better, right? So here goes, 2400 megahertz divided by two because it's double data rate memory gives a clock speed of 1200 megahertz. Convert that to hertz by multiplying by a thousand gives 1.2 million hertz or cycles per second. Now divide one second by 1.2 million, which gives 0.833 nanoseconds per cycle. So now we multiply 0.833 by 12 and get 10 nanoseconds. So the fastest this DDR3 2400 module 
can react to a command from the memory controller is 10 nanoseconds. But wait, I hear you cry, how can the DDR3-2400 module react to a command not 0.67 nanoseconds faster than the DDR4-3000 module? Well guys, it's all down to the fact that in general DDR4 may have faster memory clocks than DDR3, but it also has much worse cast latency and timings. As with all things guys, don't believe the hype that the marketing guys put out there. Now I'm not saying that DDR4 is a waste of money, far from it. DDR4 brings a host of cool features that DDR3 didn't have, but don't fall into the trap that it's faster than DDR3. I guess what I'm saying is that don't get too excited about DDR5 being an amazing step forward. I'm sure it will come with, a be with better clocks, but until latency can make a step change down, then I'm not getting too excited. This chart from Crucial's website highlights the problem well. If you look at the true latency column here, which is what we have just been calculating, you can see that the last big step in true speed or latency came with the change from SD RAM to DDR. And since then, speeds have just bounced along with a small amount of variation, but no real improvement. So guys, there you have it. The truth about memory, the latency paradox as it's called. So when you're getting hyped for that new DDR4-3600 kit with RGB goodness, take a moment and think about how fast it will actually perform looking at its cast latency. Then look at a 3200 kit. You might find that the 3200 kit is just as fast in terms of true speed and you might also save yourself some cash. Well guys, that's it. I hope you found the video informative and entertaining. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. But most of all, don't get taken in by all the marketing crap. A two minute calculation could save you a whole lot of money. Catch you later guys.